having come to the dispiriting conclusion that the internet is just a disaster. I think we need to move it more into the nuclear weapons area of invention. You think it's worse than nuclear weapons? The effect of the internet has not been to make, uh, to democratise truth like they said it was going to be, but just to make truth and lies indistinguishable. And so it's, yes, it's just like one huge haystack of things that may or may not be true. And the true one is just a bit of hay like the other. It's not even a needle. And it could be that the internet uh, and smartphones and all that cumulatively does more harm than nuclear weapons have done so far. And what do you think it means for politics? We're in an election period at the moment. Politicians are attempting lies more often and using lies as a sort of legitimate political technique. And what do you think that means for this election? Everyone's saying it's a cliche. The country has never been more divided. Um, so I think that's, you know, I, I, th I think it will make this a very nasty run up to Christmas and I hope we can cheer up after it. But, and then and the conclusion will be an unsatisfactory parliament anyway because our electoral system is ridiculous. Because that's one of your things in this book, which yeah, you'll come yeah. on to. Yeah. You have a manifesto. You want to change things. <laughs> what is your manifesto? There's three things, I well, think. Firstly, proportional representation. So the percentage of the vote a party gets dictates the percentage of the seats in the House of Commons it gets. I think that would be more sensible. Secondly, pay MPs a lot more while at the same time saying they can't do anything else. And that includes when they retire. So when they retire or they get voted out, you give them a decent pension, but you say you can't get involved in business. So... So the, essentially the malign effect of lobbyists is massively reduced. And thirdly, uh, put a tax on carbon. That I think we, we're a money-obsessed world and we have to somehow equate the environmental cost with the financial cost of things. So a lot of things that do environmental damage have to be made more expensive, unpopular though that will be. And that's the key word, unpopular, and that's why my manifesto will never be put into action. Readers of your columns will know you are quite gloomy <laughs> about the state of the world, but definitely yeah, the state yeah. of Britain. I mean, is it really that bad? Well, I'm not that gloomy. Oh, good. Uh, I'm not that gloomy, but I do think things are getting worse. Broadly speaking, most civilizations have been massively worse than the conditions we enjoy in Britain now. So we've got to keep it in perspective. We are still lucky. But I do think things are getting worse, and they only started getting worse, I'd say, quite recently. And that's, it's worth noting, isn't it? Do you think there's an echo chamber full of people actually who are saying, it's great, we're all really happy, we're so, you know, the world is brilliant, Britain's brilliant, aren't we great? You're I, just in the wrong echo chamber. I think there's an echo chamber that says anything. You know, you know, you know whatever, choose anything and there's one echo chamber that says it. And obviously I, I can't claim complete objectivity. Maybe I'm in a weird depressive echo chamber. But my, my theory is that most of the echo chambers that disagree with me would agree that things are going wrong, but would disagree with the reasons. I wondered whether you would ever consider putting your manifesto and your thoughts into action in terms of campaigning, becoming an MP. I would never consider campaigning or becoming an MP. You surprised me. No, no. I, when I, I did as a teenager think, oh, I'd like to be Prime Minister one day, but it was only about 18 months after I stopped saying, oh, I'd like to be a wizard one day. I think politics looks incredibly unappetising at the moment and I don't know who is being drawn into it other than, uh, you know, weirdos and megalomaniacs. But you could step up. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the stepping up sort of person. I'm part of the problem, not part of the solution. Do you think politicians should be more funny? For a politician, the Prime Minister is quite funny and witty. I, I, would, I would give him that. But I, but I would say he has few other strengths that are appropriate to the role. And so I would very much swap his wit for just a jot of integrity. In your book, you talk about having seen the icy contempt he holds people in. Yeah. You're not that positive about no, Jeremy I, I Corbyn either. No, uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm quite negative about both of the main party leaders at the moment. Does that mean that you're positive about somebody else? Not, not really at the moment. I, I, I think I would, I don't know how I'm going to vote in the election, but it would, I th for me, it would be about um, what I think the best chance of mitigating Brexit. You have done the alternative election night on Channel 4 before. Will you be doing it again this year? Can you, you know, it's quite a, we have, we've had quite a few elections over the last <laughs> few years. You've been busy on election yeah. night. Will you be again? I don't want to do an election night for this election, I don't think. I've lost my sense of humour about the electoral process for a bit. Someone who's still got a sense of humour about it should give that a go. And just in terms of your point about things getting worse, mm -hmm. do you think, do you worry, do you wonder 
Is it just because I'm in my 40s? No, I completely worry that it's just because now I've entered middle age. You know, I'm well into middle age. I'm a declining organism. And so, yes, why, why wouldn't, you know, that's absolutely the time when, when people start to look at the world and not like it so much and lose their optimism. Yeah, my sod's law theory is that if, if I write a book in which I clearly say the country is definitely declining, then by sod's law, that process will be reversed and then it will look embarrassing for me. And having brought out a book in which I'm comprehensively proved wrong is a price I'm willing to pay for our society to stop falling to bits.